Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a potential resolution to one of the biggest mysteries about our own sun. The mystery that's known as the coronal heating mystery. Corona being this region that you see right here around the sun itself. And the easiest way to explain it is, well, okay, we know that sun itself is pretty hot with the average temperature on the surface being roughly around 5800 degrees Kelvin. But even though this might seem like hot temperature, if you were to move a little bit away from the sun, well actually a few thousand kilometers away from the sun, the temperature would suddenly increase quite a lot, by almost a thousand times. In other words, the temperature of the so-called corona, once again this region that you see around the sun, is anywhere from 1 million to 2 million degrees Kelvin. And that's a huge difference. And it was actually very difficult for early scientists and even for the scientists today to kind of explain all of this. But the best explanation of what's possibly happening here actually came from the really famous solar astrophysicist, Dr. Eugene Parker. You probably know him because the solar probe known as the Parker Solar Probe is named after him. Now, his theories back in the 70s suggested that all of this heating could be explained if we imagined that the surface of the sun was actually covered in these really, really tiny miniature nano explosions, or more precisely nano flares as he referred to them. And these nano flares, if they were powerful enough and also if they were pretty much across the entire surface of the sun, could hypothetically explain how the sun can maintain such very high temperatures above its surface. But the problem here is that, well, these nano flares would be really, really tiny and they would be relatively difficult for us to see. And most importantly, there's really no actual proof of their activity on the surface unless we can somehow zoom into the surface of the sun and see them in action. So in other words, the theory here was just a theory. There was practically no way to actually prove it until I guess more or less recently. It just so happens that the modern telescopes it reached an ability to really zoom into the surface of the sun and see a lot more detail that we've never been able to see before. I guess the best example here would be the picture taken by Daniel Inui telescope a few months ago. But just looking at the surface of the sun is unfortunately not enough to prove any theory, because most of these theories do sort of explain all of this as an interaction between, for example, magnetic fields, interaction between various very very hot particles, and also interactions of the magnetic lines as they snap on the surface of the sun. But all of these micro snapping events are basically really really difficult to see. And so a lot of various observations are required for all of this and some of the recent observations from this beautiful satellite known as IRIS or Interface Region Imaging Spectrograph allowed us to take several very very precise images of the sun in various frequencies which also finally allowed the scientists behind this paper that you can also find in the description below to kind of sort of finally explain what could be possibly causing the corona of the sun to be so extremely ridiculously hot. And once again, the explanation here is in regards to the nano flares, but in this case, it does involve a few more additional explanations. So we believe, at least for now, that the corona is actually heated by these tiny, tiny explosions all across the surface of the sun. But just like a typical large solar flare, which you can sort of see forming right here, they are essentially a result of various magnetic line interactions. But unlike a solar flare, these nano flares will usually have very very small magnetic fields snapping and also interacting with one another extremely fast in very very small nano flare events. These nano flare events essentially convert the magnetic energy of the magnetic lines inside the sun into kinetic energy which essentially kind of throws out a lot of very very hot material which then ends up heating up the corona. So it basically converts the magnetic energy into the plasma energy of the region around the sun. And a lot of this energy is carried to these regions by the larger magnetic field lines that kind of basically serve as a delivery system to these farther regions. But all of this is obviously a lot more complicated. So for example, to mathematically explain all of this and to explain the heating of the corona, we would actually expect roughly around 50 of these really powerful nano flares in the region equivalent to Earth you see right there. And that's every single second. And they would also have to be really, really powerful. But because of the sizes here, because of the actual tiny, tiny minuscule 
nano flares that we're talking about here, it would be really difficult for us to prove this or to see this in action. And so up until now, this was just a theory for many, many decades. But thanks to some of the recent observations, we might have actually finally witnessed it in action. So when the scientists behind this paper zoomed into some of the images from Iris satellite, they did witness certain unusual loops that were incredibly hot, millions of degrees hot, with the heat itself being distributed in a very unusual and a very peculiar way, with some of the tiny regions on the surface of the sun being extremely hot, millions of degrees hot, yet other regions being extremely cold, only a few thousand degrees. And this unusual distribution of heat and these very strange formations could only really be produced by some sort of a magnetic line interaction. There's really no other explanation to what's happening here. But these are extremely minuscule and very, very tiny formations. Can these really be these nanoflares or at least the formations that are created by the nanoflares? And most importantly, did this event in some way influence the corona afterwards? Because without the connection between corona and these unusual observations, we can't really speculate if one influences the other. For all we know, maybe this is just another mystery on the surface of the sun. Well, it turns out that the connection has been made. Here's what the scientists saw. First of all, they discovered that these very strange interactions turn somewhat cool plasma into super hot plasma practically in an instant. They kind of compared this to taking an ice cube and realizing that in a single instant this ice cube has become like a thousand degrees celsius. Basically super super hot. Okay, not the right ice cube here. And this is of course the effects from the magnetic line interaction and the magnetic line snapping. The magnetic energy becoming super hot plasma. But did this somehow affect the corona above it? And this was of course the difficult part to prove. Here the scientists had to look at the region above the surface where they witnessed this unusual event and try to see if the temperature of this region changed as well. And having made the observations right above this region, the scientists realized that it did indeed change temperatures quite a lot. It took approximately 20 seconds to deliver all of this heat to these regions, but they observed it 10 separate times, and every time it seemed to have increased the temperature of the corona, suggesting that maybe indeed these observations right here are these nanoflare events, the events responsible for heating up the corona. But unfortunately, at the moment, we cannot really definitively say if this is the only event that's doing all of this and if this is the only event responsible for the heat corona receives. Because the only way we could actually prove this is if we could somehow see these events across the surface of the entire sun. Because entire corona, or at least the major part of corona, is extremely hot. If we can somehow witness these events happening across the entire surface, that would definitely explain everything. For now, we only have observations from a relatively tiny region of the sun, and that's just not enough to prove this as an actual fact, because at the moment we only have these observations from a relatively small part of the solar surface. But that's not all, because the scientists were able to even to some extent explain how all of this is happening. It's somewhat difficult to understand how is it that the heat doesn't just stay on the surface of the sun, why does it actually transfer to these outer regions? And the explanation here comes from the idea that the sun isn't just made out of hydrogen and helium. It also already has produced certain other elements such as oxygen and silicon. And these uh, elements are, well, they're heavier. They're much heavier than hydrogen and helium. Because of this, they have more momentum if they have more energy. And what's really, really interesting here is that by observing these differences in different elements being present and being shot out by these magnetic interactions, the scientists surprisingly discovered that things like, for example, hydrogen and helium, and even things like oxygen, which are relatively light, didn't really get that far from the surface. They basically kind of stayed at the surface and eventually cooled down. But things like silicon, which are heavier elements, ended up shooting out of the surface of the sun at speeds of about 100 kilometers per second, literally moving thousands of kilometers away from the sun and thus heating up the outer regions that we refer to as corona. And the explanation here is, well, once again magnetic. As the magnetic lines interact and as they snap, they end up accelerating these ions, which acquire a lot more momentum than lighter ions, which literally just allows them to push their way through all of this lighter material. In other words, heavier elements with more energy inside have a higher chance of leaving this region and are not stopped by anything like hydrogen or helium, 
whereas the lighter atoms just don't have enough momentum to leave the surface of the sun. And the longer these silicon atoms or silicon ions move along these lines, the more momentum and the more heat they acquire. And eventually all of this heat makes its way toward the solar corona, where it essentially creates these really hot regions based on all of this really hot silicon. Although theoretically, a very specific ratio of silicon to oxygen would have to be present in these locations. And according to the scientists behind this paper, they did seem to discover the exact proportions needed for all of this to work as, well, as I just described, as they describe in their paper. In other words, it does seem like we might have finally explained how corona work, at least to some extent. This is still a very preliminary discovery and it still needs to be proven with other papers. But as it stands, we might have finally solved a mystery of, well, several decades, since the original proposition in 1978. But once again, in order for us to prove all of this, we would now have to really kind of zoom in to the surface of the sun and also be able to see all of these very powerful events happening all over the sun in order for us to account for the extreme heat of the entire corona. But we're kind of far from being able to do all of this. We still need to have even better telescopes, even better satellites, and a lot more observations of various very tiny events happening on the surface of the sun. Which is something that the scientists behind this paper hope will happen in the next few decades. But I guess until we discover more about the corona, or until we finally prove this as a fact, or explain this in some other way, that's really all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful presentation you can find in the description, or by supporting this channel on Patreon. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.